ISIS had Muslim. the Muslims themselves. And let's not forget that at the forefront of fighting ISIS today are the brave Syrian people who are fighting on both fronts, the, 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 the barbaric regime of Assad and the barbarism of, of ISIS. And then we complain and say, what are the Muslim people doing to, 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 to root out terrorism and extremism? Let's not forget that some of our own foreign policy as Americans, as the West, have fueled that extremism. When we support coup leaders in Egypt or other places, when we support dictatorship, we are partly responsible. You're, he's a lying sack of you-know-what, a complete and total liar, right to his core. This is the liberal lie, the big lie. And I stand by those words. See page 71 of Government Zero, the most important book you'll ever have in your library in this day and age of terror. See Islam's 1,400-year war against the world. And you're listening to this lying sack of garbage from CARE saying that we caused the terrorism? They've been at war with everybody since uh, Muhammad died. Maybe even before Muhammad died. How many Jews were killed by Muhammad's armies before the state of Israel was created? How many? How many of their possessions were stolen by the sacred practitioners of the religion of peace? So if you want to buy into the narrative that we caused this violence, you are a man or a woman who knows nothing. You don't even know your own history, let alone the history of the world. Maybe you ought to educate yourself. Maybe you should stop being an ignoramus. You know, I have a friend, a very bright man. He's a good friend of mine. And he knows someone who he thinks is very smart. And she's a complete liberal, doesn't know anything about what's going on in the world. He says, oh, she doesn't want to be involved. She doesn't want to hear anything about ISIS or about Islam or about... I said, well, wait a minute. That's called ignorance. And there's a word for that. It's called ig an ignoramus is someone who's, who's ignorant. So don't tell me she's bright. An ignoramus is somebody who may or may not have innate intelligence. But if this innately intelligent person does not educate themselves as to what is going on around themselves and the world, then they're an ignoramus. So don't fall for the liberal garbage that they're super intelligent with 160 IQ and they went to Harvard. If they don't know what's going on, they're an ignoramus. That's what the word, that's what the word applies to. That's, the word applies. Ignoramus is an ignorant person. Don't ignore history, or you will be condemned to repeat it, as we are. We are repeating history. We are going through what every other nation on earth that has been super tolerant has gone through. Only this is just the beginning. These are the baby steps. It's as though 9-11 never happened. We elected a man with a Muslim background. Many years after 9-11, we forgot what happened. In fact, the liberals sympathized with his Muslim background, thinking that he would be better for America's safety rather than worse. Because liberalism itself is a mental disorder. Yes, you heard me. Oh, we all want to be nice and we all want to be tolerant. But at the point of suicide, you have to reevaluate your niceness and your tolerance, don't you? At what point do you reevaluate the level of your tolerance? At what point? Do you reevaluate your desire to be so nice to everyone, even those who want to slit your throat and blow your house up? When? When do you wake up? When? You know, George Orwell, one of my favorite authors who wrote Animal Farm and other great books, was a communist in the 1930s when it was quite fashionable amongst the intelligentsia to be communist because they thought that that was the way. And then he woke up and he found out what they were doing and how evil they were, etc. and so on. He saw what Stalin was and he became anti-communist and he wrote these books, including Animal Farm. He saw what happens when the, quote, people take over the farm, meaning in the form of the animals, right? George Orwell had many sayings that I remember. One of them is this. If a man comes to put a bomb in your mother's house, put a bomb in his mother's house first. Now, I suppose today Loretta Lynch would have him arrested because she could imply that it's aimed at the particular uh, group. She could have his books banned or burned. That may be next for Loretta Lynch. After all, she was handpicked by Ayatollah Sharpton. A Ayatollah Sharpton picked this attorney general. What would you expect? Would you expect fairness and light to emanate from her mind? Uh, I had hoped, perhaps, yes. I had hoped to God that she was not Eric Holder in a dress. It turns out she's worse than Eric Holder in a dress. This is a nightmarish development what happened yesterday. And in case you haven't heard it, I'm going to play it for you now. The Attorney General of the United States of America appointed 
by Barack Obama after being handpicked by Ayatollah Sharpton, gave a speech that is resonating throughout the intellectual uh, world. Nobody can believe that she would make a statement like this. Listen to clips one and two, back to back on the Savage Nation. Now, obviously, this is a country that is based on free speech. But when it edges towards violence, when we edges? see uh, the potential for someone to lift, lifting that mantle potential. of anti-Muslim edges. rhetoric, or, as we saw after 9-11, violence directed at individuals who may not even be Muslims, but may be perceived to be Muslims. Um, and, and they will suffer just as well, just as much. Uh, when we see that, we will take action. That I think we have, yes, we have charged 225 defendants with hate crimes offenses over the last six years, most of those in the last three years. Um, since 9-11, we've had a, over a thousand investigations into acts of anti-Muslim hatred, including uh, rhetoric uh, and bigoted actions, with, with over 45 uh, prosecutions arising out of that. Um, I think, sadly, that number is going to continue. You hear this breathlessness, like she's doing something good? Have you heard of a thousand investigations into acts of anti-Christian hatred, anti-Jewish hatred? I haven't. What side is this government on? I think it's sadly obvious to anyone who studies this case that they're not on the side of freedom and they're not on the side of America, and they're certainly not on the side of Christians. This is a frightening development in America. Listen finally to clip three from uh, Ayatollah uh, Al Sharpton's pick for the Attorney Generalship, Loretta Lynch, in number three. I think it's important, however, that as we again talk about the importance of free speech, we make it mm -hmm. clear that mm -hmm. actions predicated on violent talk are not mm -hmm. America. They are not mm -hmm. who we are, they're not what we do, and they will be prosecuted. So I want that message to be clear also. All right. So actions predicated on violent talk are not America. I agree with you. I don't engage in violent talk. I avoid it like the plague. In fact, on my Facebook page, I'm very clear. Any mentions of violence will be banned from my page. But what about Muslims who engage in violent talk, Loretta? What about the mullahs, all, excuse me, the so-called imams all over America who are engaging in violent, speak, violent talk in Arabic? Are you monitoring them? Do you have enough Arabic speakers in the Justice Department who are not fellow travelers who are monitoring the mosques? I think not. I don't think you have 5,000 Arabic speakers who are listening for such violent talk in mosques, Miss Lynch, are you? So therefore, you're only listening to those who speak English. Well, I think that's rather biased, by the way, even though we're all opposed to violence, except in the name of self-defense, obviously. No one listening to the show should get confused about what I'm saying. But the fact of the matter is, we are in very dangerous times when we wake up and we hear such a breathless defense of fascism by the highest lawyer, the number one cop in America. I rest my case. I return in a minute on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O.